Yeah, I think that the real barrier for longer form content was just the fundamental consumption patterns that we saw on the web. So when you think about it, that uh, for example, YouTube, when YouTube came along, and that really sort of set the market for video consumption, right? That was about two and a half years ago. And when you looked at that, that was pretty short. You know, you're talking about what the traditional sort of video snacking and the portals as well. Basically, 30 seconds, maybe a minute for a clip that people were watching. So what we've started to see, this has been covered extensively by Comscore, by eMarketer, et cetera, is this shift. And I look at it as the next big shift, which was Hulu. What Hulu did was it brought a whole different, not only video consumption sort of pattern, but it also brought a whole different pattern of marketing in. Really, the TV dollars started to shift, and people started to realize, I get it. I can shift my budget from TV, from network television over here with this show, to the same show on the web. So what we started to see was a, a, a mind shift as well on the marketing side. What's interesting in terms of the longer form content consumption, I think really that Hulu began to usher in in particular, is the fact that people now are watching a lot more movies. They're watching full episodic television on the web. And what that means from our perspective and what we've begun to discover is there's different ways of marketing to those people and why that's significant in particular. If you look at our advertisers in nightly news, for example, pharmaceutical advertisers far and away the biggest advertiser in that space. Now, why is that significant? Traditionally, the challenge with pharmaceutical advertising is you have to run a one-minute ad, and that's because of fair balance. And fair balance means that for 30 seconds, they can tell you all the great effects, and for 30 seconds, they tell you the reason why you know, your teeth are going to fall out, your eyes are going to pop out, et cetera, and why the drug is going to do certain bad things. That's fair balance. Well, the nature of the web traditionally had been that if you had anything longer than 15 and maybe 30 seconds for an ad, if you're watching a 30 second clip or a one minute clip, you're not going to sit through advertising that's actually longer than the video clip that you're watching. Well, what's happened with the longer form content consumption that we're seeing is these thresholds are growing. People are willing to front load their video content consumption with advertising in exchange for more video without commercial disruption. And it's an area that we've been experimenting in for about the last year, and we've actually been working with Pfizer with a, with a major pharmaceutical advertiser who sponsored what we call Adopter. And our Adopter is the ability for an, a viewer to come in and say, in exchange for watching a one minute or one minute of commercial advertising on the front end, I will get six minutes without any commercial disruption on the back end. And, you know, it gets back to the fundamentals of what we do, in, in particular with our ad platform, which is time-based ad serving. And time-based ad serving, traditionally what had happened with pre-roll, and, and one of the issues that pre-roll had with marketers in particular was someone would come in and watch. They would click on a video to watch that video. They would get their 15 or 30-second pre-roll. And then they would say, you know what, I really wanted to watch this other video. So they would click on that, and guess what? The same 15 or 30-second pre-roll would load. At that point, usually the viewer was out of there. They were done. And not only were they out of there, they also hated the advertiser because the advertiser, in their eyes, was a person that was putting this message in front of them and, and keeping them away from the content they wanted to see. Time-based ad serving means that what we do is we set off a timer in the background. When you click on that first video clip and you get your 15 or 30 second pre-roll, a timer goes off and says, don't serve them another ad for at least three minutes of video consumption. So the reason why that's relevant, again, getting back to Adopter, is now we can set those thresholds. TimeBase allows us to look at that threshold and grow it according to how much uh, advertising the person's watch. If they watch one minute, they can get six minutes or nine minutes or even commercial free on the back end, depending on where we want to set that threshold. What about ads that are served in, during a long form? So is it all stacked up in the beginning or is it... Are there are there in in stream ads that come up or how? Does that yeah, there's a, well, there's there there's a lot of things that have been traditionally associated with pre-roll. You know what would have been called post-roll, mid-roll, mid-stream. You know any number of ways that you can do that ad serving. And really, as you as we start to see the shift towards longer form consumption, I think you're going to see these platforms evolving, and it's going to be evolving more towards. And some people won't like this, but what's been a traditional TV model in the sense of ad pods, and that's sort of the, you know, the word or the phrase that no one wants to hear in online video, but I think you can look at it as, uh, you can look at it creatively and say, well, an ad pod doesn't have to be eight 
30 second commercials all stacked up, you know, in between every 10 minutes of video the way it is on television. You can look at it and say, well, it could be any number of different ad types. It could be commercial free. It could be transitional skin. It could be a post roll, a mid roll, however you want to serve that ad. So in other words, to your question, if you're watching a 30 second episode of, you know, if you're watching the Rachel Maddow show in, in you know, in complete form, we could do any number of advertising scenarios that could be based on any number of time-based scenarios, right? So that we could serve you an ad every six minutes as you're watching that video. We could serve you a bug below the video player while you're still watching that video content. We could create interactive scenarios where the advertiser could own keywords that are popping up as you're watching the video content that would let you interact deeper with that video content. So I think one of the things that's really interesting with the web that we're just starting to explore, and the reason why I say you know, that, that term ad pod is it, it's, it's very flexible right now. And the reason why is because the web allows us to interact with the consumer in a way that television just hasn't done to date. And I think that's where it becomes very interesting. What can you do with 4G? Experience 4G from Sprint. It's more than a wireless network. It's a wireless revolution.